Well, someone's figured out a way to uh, to really get into my head. And, you know, there actually is no better way to figure out what I'm talking about than to do a trial and error yourself. Um, the um, um, most important thing happening is is your interpretation of what you see in front of you. Uh, today I began, says Mary, a painting that uses the many things I've gleaned from my your videos, see, see visual order, paint light to dark, paint spots, paint effects, see the whole while painting a spot. I should give you a list, shouldn't I? <laughs> Attached are photos showing how I did it so far. Can you say if I'm on the right track? Now, Mary has provided a... Um, has has given me the information that she's painting from a photograph, and I'm not going to recommend that you paint from photographs ever. But it, it, first of all, especially when you're training your eye, it just it's kind of pointless because the photographs already got the information. But the fact is, we're ordering visual information, and even a photograph has, even though it's already done all this work of interpreting for you, <clears throat> it still has basic visual data if you limit yourself just to that plane. So, what I'm going to try to do is walk through what she's done. Uh, and then uh, uh, on on this uh, presentation thing, and then I'm going to try to demonstrate a little bit over here, okay? And since what you guys really like more than anything else is, uh, is a magic wand on, on a piece of paper. So um, so here is the four here are the four pictures that she sent me. And thank you, Mary, for giving me permission to do this uh, with your stuff. Um, uh, so the upper left one clearly here is a uh, shot of um, uh, the original uh, corner of a room, pillow, uh, curtain and window, uh, and some sunlight uh, making fun shapes to the right in the background. To the very far right, she's got a, a top right, she's got a start, the very beginning of a start. And um, I encourage you, you all to think about this first layer all the way up to the point where she has on the right. Uh, as a start, and then uh, uh, you'll understand how to stay big and you know, why I talk about these things. So, uh, but anyway, I'll just walk you through the various things in the one at a time. So, in this um, instance, one of the things we're trying to do at the beginning is establish our darkest dark and lightest light. And and uh, in this photograph, and by the way, just for Mary's sake, understand that I can only work what I see, and um, and uh, it matters that you're. Um, uh, accepting it as what I see, not what you actually did or anything like that. It won't help you any. So if you can adapt the information as I give it, um, uh, you know, good luck with that. At any rate, we do paint in the visual order, right? So there's a visual order of effect, right? So what we're talking about is the most dramatic effects here, and I'm going to show you how these work out, but possibly the most dramatic, well, this is the, probably possibly the most, the strongest light, but as effects go, it's the, probably the strongest effect is this one right here. Uh, in terms of early uh, and useful effects, we have this thing, we have that point there. We have a lot of soft nothings up here. We have a little something here. But the rest of this in here, if you blow your eye, tends not to be significant compared to with, with those things. And therefore, those things, such as this one right here, isn't going to be uh, that prominent. And you'll see how and why in, in just a little bit. Uh, secondly, there's a whole lot of extra drawing in these areas here. So if you did this actually, took this photograph, <laughs> uh, if you had been working on it from other photographs, you should actually send those. But uh, obviously you're painting what looks like a window and that's the biggest thing we've got to avoid doing. We're not painting windows, we're painting effects and the right relationship and these effects have a relationship to each other by, by angle, right? So when we're talking about this spot right here, this line is useful as an effect, but you see that we have not we have to develop that spot or something we can use for measuring. So Sargent talks about points. That's in the category of a point. This is the leading side of that thing. Now you could easily have used this point here. You could conceivably have used this one. That's a harder one to see. I see this one more easily myself. Uh, and these guys, because they're little and unimportant, uh, you've done okay with, you haven't done much with them at this point, but this is very early, I get that. This thing is the one that's wildly out of order though, isn't it? You got it looking like the strongest thing in the entire painting. It cannot look like that from the beginning till the end. It cannot, it's got to have its role from the very, from the very first. It can't, be, it can't present as stronger than this. Doesn't mean it isn't one of the darkest, conceivably as dark here as the darkest dark, it conceivably is. 
Uh, that doesn't continue to happen as it goes through here, so it's doubtful that it actually is. Usually when you see a dark between two lights, such as this post and this thing here, that dark is going to appear darker than this. But establishing your darkest dark, which she's tried to do here, is uh, primary, right? Anyway, so we'll walk you through that. Anyway, the second one, this is, oops, did I jump one? Uh, yeah. So then this is the next one. She's developed it a little bit further. And what we're going to talk about when we get to this, we're going to talk about the visual order. You see that the very weak effects here are similar in strength to this effect. And that's just not true. What I mean to say, the contrasts are lower. And we're just dealing with high contrast effects, right? The highest contrast effects. And then, of course, your job is going to be to get this effect talking to this one, right? So that conversation is very prompt, very, very significant. It's, very, it's, in, it's in the order of the first things we're trying to get here. Um, all the little drawing that you've done here, 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 there's way too much minor drawing this stuff here. Anything inside this area, you have to learn to see past that. It's a very interesting art, but you do have to learn to see past the details to the majors. And uh, what, that, what that requires is for you to learn to blur your eye, which wasn't one of those things on your list, by the way. But the blurring of the eye is the key to seeing unity, to seeing how things hang together and which things not to work on right now. And, uh, and to make sure that you actually ma maintain a certain unity with those things so, that, so it doesn't say, well, and I'm just sort of throwing that in a little bit because uh, it will cause problems for you. And uh, so the order of effects again. And then the last one and, um, is the same, much the same category. You're doing more, more and more little things uh, at, at, really at the expense of the major. This is a major thing that this thing here is weak and this is strong, that this here is weak and this is strong, right? Um, that this is generally a dark. So you can see that. And by the way, the unity of this whole thing through here, in your photograph now, keep in mind that I use, what you're showing me is what I'm working with, the way it presents here on my screen. It's what, it's what I have to work with. So you're, but, but here you're saying that you made a contrast here. That's roughly the same as this one. Now you can plainly see that's not true. If you blur your eyes especially, you can see that this is a higher contrast. By the way, you do have to sort of look away and see which effect comes to you. Don't go look, don't get your eye in there looking for trouble, looking for things. <laughs> so, um, uh, but again, if you just look away, you'll see that it's this, right? If you look away, you might allow yourself a little bit of that, right? But nothing else it, for the longest time until these major guys are really well situated. And by the way, not just in their effects and their major unities uh, between the effects, but the articulation and the location of the drawing really is key. That really has to be good. And you can see that the placement of this thing isn't, isn't according to this photograph, uh, isn't well placed uh, in a number of ways, right? And it just simply presents as big. So that's, a, that's significant. Okay. But and in the meantime, so how many effects could we have not drawn? You know, the idea of putting a dark here and having it hit a middle tone here, when you could have painted it all as one, have that in mind. You know, why, uh, Ang said, why do you make it out of three little pieces when you could have made it just as well out of one big one? Now that has everything to do with the start and the big ideas of the start. So let's see if I can do that. Now so I'm going to walk away from the um, uh, from the screen here and just show you what I mean on this on this thing here and see if I can do this in an adequate way. The light has gotten glarier as I've sat here and I don't dare move, do I? I lose my focus on myself. Um, let me just reduce this a little bit to uh, see. I have I have three 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 uh, charcoal type things that I think will work on this paper. Remember, this is all experimental, too, for me at this point. I mean, just this por portion of it. But just for the phase she's at here, uh, this whole passage uh, uh, in through here, let's just do that. I don't know if I can do that with a gray. No, it doesn't have any value. So this whole passage here should have been, and I'm going to stick my finger in it. I'm going to do whatever I can do. This whole passage here should have been considerably darker, right? Now, if you're thinking the way I think, you're not even seeing that there's an edge here. What you see is that the, 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 uh, coming out of this dark is a lost area, right? And it just oozes out of this light. It's darker and darker and then disappears right over here, right? Disappears into this thing here. And we don't draw. We're not drawing any of this stuff because you'll waste your time. Now remember the idea of a start. Uh, it, the idea of a start is to make sure you have all the major effects, the strong ones, in the right places, okay, by the time the uh, day ends. And um, so... Um, if I can just keep on messing with this a little bit and show you how I intend for this to present generally the way it presents. That line that's sitting right there, I don't want any part of it, okay? So if you blur your eyes with me, you won't, that's what you'll see. And then you'll see, and now, but what you're gonna see now, you have a darkest dark down here, 
maybe that's true if it were in the right place. Let's move it over. It's not true, but if let's move it over. Now, when you're doing this phase here, and you see something you put in there, and it's not in the right place from here to here, go ahead and make the adjustment, okay? Now, I'm not interested in the next thing that happens there, so I'm just trying to lose that edge if I can, lose that into the background. But down here, something is going on, this, and we, what we need right now, in this phase right here, if you're gonna make a point, it needs to be this thing coming around here, right? And then this whole thing disappearing, as you can see, choop, disappearing right into this thing over into here. And let's take even more of that. You know, do your best here. This is a place where you wanna actually try to draw the thing, articulate it, and, uh, but do it right to an effect, okay? And then pull all this stuff together uh, into unity so that I'm not looking at anything inside there. Now, there isn't much in there anyway, so you have mercy, right? But you can see what I'm trying to do. Now, your job is to articulate the Dickens out of that. And the minute you see that this is relatively more lost than this one, you've got to make sure it does that. If you need that for your point, and the upper part of it is lost, and the lower part is, I'm mean, sorry, the upper part is highly found, and the lower part is less found, that's because you have to have this point, and it's going to go around and have that shift in it. Uh, you, you're just going to have to work with it that way, right? You have to eliminate the, you have to weaken this just a little bit. But that's, you can see how that begins to present. Now, we, we do have other issues with relation to the drawing, but what we need to do right now, see what I was talking about here? Everything is off about this thing here. All this stuff should be pulled together. Once again, much like I was saying here, I don't really want to get into this yet, okay? You may think you do, <laughs> but, but don't get ambitious, right? Doesn't mean these values here are technically wrong. It's just that what we're doing is causing a fusion that'll, that'll do for now, right? Now, if you think big with me, what you're going to see is there's a major middle tone here coming out of this, sweeping out of here. Do you see that? And this major middle tone gradually getting lighter as it goes over toward here, right, is the defining value of that area, right? This is big middle tone mass, right? You see that? Now that's the major, that's the major unity of this area, right? And you can see that thing there still screaming at me. <laughs> can we get that to be quiet? So how about, how, how would it be if we don't draw anything there at all for a bit, right? And this is, you'll begin to see possibly what my thinking is. I'm trying to establish the majors. I don't want to be looking in finding any minors, but I'm also trying to establish the top and bottom or whatever it is. Um, uh, I see that I've moved that myself, I think a little too far to the right. But so anytime you see something like a, an adjustment that should be made, don't wait around to do it so later, 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 because everything you do, both the effect is gonna cause r ramifications and then, and then so is, I mean, the angle is, the, lot, the, high, the effect, the high quality sharpness is going to cause problems for you, but so is the location. And so each of these things, both the location this way and the location this way. So, but you can see in terms of general impression, right? You can see that I'm gonna be pulling all this stuff into Unity. You'd all be doing this, right? You'd all be just, everybody watching this is with me, right? <laughs> well, and this is the lay-in, by the way. This makes it such a mercy. I didn't say to you all that uh, she's working with, uh, that Mary's working with uh, not oil. There is no way in the world that any medium is better than oil for doing what I'm talking about. I've never used acrylic uh, paint. I think you said it was acrylic. I've never used that before. Uh, uh, well, I mean, to say I've never worked it into becoming an expert at it, but I know one thing, that it was brutal in terms of trying to find a, uh, uh, you know, any fluid... Uh, wet into wet thing that would stay there very long. But to the extent that you can do it, if you know ways to do that, then just go ahead and do it. Now, what I'm trying to get to is this effect right right, right there, right? You see that one? I say what, what I call a first effect. So you don't need this for the longest time, or you don't need this. Now, if you'd laid this in the way I do, you would have still had big white mat patches of canvas. But now that you've got all this stuff in here, we've got, to, we've got to eliminate it. We've got to bring the light effect here, right? We've got to make sure this light effect actually pops. And this is now being as literal as we can. If the paper won't get any light, if this is our lightest light, we don't necessarily have to use white, but but we have to know what that is. In fact, we probably shouldn't be using white. I, my guess is that this will be our whitest white. So probably, so that means that what we're going to have to do is is create this effect with a gray, which means this dark is going to have to get as dark as we need for it to get until that thing pops with light and says, I am the most significant effect possibly in this whole thing. And again, I say the lightest light could very well be here. The leading effect in this thing could be way over here. I say leading effect. Now watch, this will be whiter. 
This won't be as this won't be as dark as that. But if you combine it with the sharpness of the edge, right there, you'll see that you can get a very pre, uh, impressive effect. Right? Do you see where I'm going? Now again, I uh, I don't want to lose all your time in in the, in the drawing of this thing, which is don't. But you mustn't. <laughs> to think the drawing is not hugely important. And I don't mean the drawing of the objects, some of which it shows that you're looking at here, okay? It looks like you're thinking a little bit too much about drawing objects. Um, now, if you said, you know, in a picture, you're simply trying to, in one of the beginning phases, you're trying to say, what's my, what are my parameters? What's my top and bottom? Well, in a wide picture, I ask, what are the parameters width-wise? So I want to set this one up, and this one actually is a very plausible, both by softness of edge and by value contrast, it's rather plausible. Uh, probably it's going to have to be darker if this is going to work out well. But, um, uh, oh, by the way, I, let, me, let me add something. I said don't be doing all this little stuff in here, but when you have a big light and it actually has form in it, you have, you have sort of speak, my permission. <laughs> You have my permission to blow on this feeling of form that happens in here. Just don't get into it and waste time, okay? But you can do that. You, you, in fact, you, you should do that. If this isn't a flat area, it probably needs to look like it isn't a flat area. Okay, so uh, where am I? So then you can see that if you're, depending on what you choose over here to use. So, so this is a pretty good, I'm sorry, this is my far right point. Now, what is my far left point? Well, that's where you have permission to say, well, it looks like it. it's this thing right over coming in here, right? So that one there, which is darker than this thing here by a bit, right? And again, that gives you a chance to consider some drawing. And this is where I say points and angles really is such a friend. Um, and I'm saying the, the point being, being this width here, this width here to this, this height here to this, right? These proportions. So you put that, you can actually get that in, a, in pretty good order really quick like. This paper is not the best paper for doing this. It's just photograph. It's just a, you know, standard stuff from the studio. Um, and now at any point if you feel that in general this thing is getting to this or to that, like for example, this is looking a little, there's a movement in here. Remember I mentioned the eggness of that, the rounding of the uh, that thing. Well, this thing has a movement that appears to be generally lighter up here, getting darker down in through this way, right? So you could actually say that early on. That's called a movement, but and it's still rather simple. It's still the idea of a great simplicity, right? So we're not into it in a little way. We're into it in a grand way, right? This is a grand form. This is a grand movement of value, okay? So we're going to want this corner up here to be... Um, and by the way, um, establishing this thing here... You did a pretty nice job, really, it looks like, using this thing right here. You know, saying this is the um, corner. I'm going to say, let's use this for the right thing. But go for the, go to get a point. Give me a point there and use it and get it in the right place this way. Get it in the right place this way. You do all that work, okay? And, um, uh, and again, I've said there's two different things. One is the parameters, the left and the right. I'll, I'll spend two more seconds on this one. It's hard to do this. It's hard to even get over to this thing from standing in a sitting in a chair like this, but um, but but you can see where I'm heading with this with this idea. So um, I'm getting some point here. That's going I'm going to call this the left point. You might even use something as minor as the line in that window. You know, something as minor as that. But you won't do it except for the purpose of getting yourself a of getting yourself a left and right. Okay, but over here, so here you have a right point. And I went a little too dark with that one. And again, let these don't look don't let this look too busy, okay? Just keep this simplified in some way. Keep sticking your finger in it or whatever. In the case here, somebody was asking me about that in one of these videos, so I stuck my finger in it. But the answer is kind of like whatever it takes. This is a very right now, this is a very generic thing. But can, if you can see the visual order of these effects, um, you're you're doing pretty well. Um, now um, Let's see where else I should go. So depending on what you're trying to do, more or less, this thing here probably could go ahead and you could actually stick that in right now. There's no reason to run away from that one. You see what I'm talking about. Again, I'm going to have to mix colors a little bit. I'd like that upper part to be a little bit darker around here, right? And then I'd like this to be a little bit lighter in through here. Notice I'm just doing this as if it were uh, adjusting the color on the screen. 
a little bit. So anyway, but you'll have work to do because this height starts being important. You don't want to be running away from that, okay? And and so continuing, this is the um, this is the right side. Now. Uh, you can see, though, that I actually probably, in terms of establishing this, in terms of effects, this might be, this, this thing over here, this is just a little bit sharper than the other one. But this one's not truly a sharp edge. It's just sharper than this one. What is the sharpest edge in this picture, actually? It's an interesting question. Could be something like that. Could be this. Uh, it definitely isn't this, though, right? But there's an order of edges. There's a, a difference here between these two edges. So... Um, Anyway, this is very difficult to do this way, but I'm, I'm still thinking it's going to work out for you to understand what I'm saying. I'm just mostly telling you what, you, what you'd rather have you work on rather than what you are working on. If this doesn't work out, I won't be happy, but <laughs> we may be okay. You can see this here, this proportion, you know, that's in the nature of something like more than a third, so you can actually take, take that into consideration. A third is a way of conceptualizing, by the way. One a feeling of one over three or something like that is something we can hold in our brain. It's just proportional. And every time you do what we call a concept, think that way, think proportion. That'll make it, if you get this height right here, now, by the way, you can see this is too low, right? This one here. So these things start making a big difference. And I was going to put us onto this one anyway, because of its uh, rather leading effect, this thing here coming down and then shooting this thing up in through here. And you can see how that lines up. And various in various ways. I'm talking about the top edge of that. So if you can give me that much of this, and don't have to get into here right now, and see if you can establish the light effect in here, this is your most important one, then that's what I would be doing. But you see, what's happening is if you do this well, is that you're going to be get, beginning to get this visual order, um, this feeling of, of the orderliness of the effects, right? So now I'm definitely going to pop this... Um, my whites aren't very good here. So I can do better with this one. If this is as light as I can get, we may be at uh, this may be an impossible chore. Uh, anyway, all right. Now we can see in here there may be a, a, in terms of effects. Now remember, there's two things I'm talking about. One is effects, and one the other one is locations in space. So you have all those things to deal with. Um, I think I moved this one down too much. Now this one feels too wide, and often the widths are a function of the but widths are always a function of the heights. So if this is actually in the wrong place this way, and from my position here it's hard to see the angles too. So, but if this is in the wrong place, then reconsider this proportion here, right? Um, and and get that right. Reconsider this one. By the way, we may have thought this was was the right width, but once you get this height right, it might be that this width will actually feel different. So all those things relate to each other. All those things are things you have to work on at this stage. All right, and then eventually you're going to get over to um, well, what's the leading effect? Leading effect over on the right side, and it probably is the inside of your. Um, I'm trying to place a light in there. It's probably this spot here, wherever this spot is. Remember, think spot. Try to locate that spot. Just float that spot out there. And, and get it out there with the purest light you can get, which I don't have any left, <laughs> none of which is left here. And, uh, and think about that one place. And again, the location of that thing, you can see it's above center in a certain degree. And, uh, and think about that one location right there and try to deliver its light effect. I'm talking about that one right there. <laughs> try to deliver its light effect without thinking about the next thing over, without thinking about the windowsill if you can. And then you're going to be sewn into the, into the next thing that reads, which could very well be a portion of that window. So, uh, all right. But, but don't get greedy for this. This should be lost. This here should be lost into that, right? There's nothing in here for you to see, right? Exactly. So if you can keep on weakening things. Now, in the meantime, if this, if this light actually keeps on extending itself, there's no reason, nothing stopping you from doing that. Just don't believe it's about drawing now. It's about a big value movement. But the placement, it could become about drawing in a minute if that placement starts becoming significant. So I don't know if I've showed you enough for this phase. I'll jump to the other one. The, oh, you want me to follow up with this stuff here. Well, what I'm saying at this phase is if you haven't done well with these guys, with the light effects of this point here, this point here, this point here, you probably don't need anything else. Just stay with those things for the longest time, as long as you need to, until these things start making some sense together, okay? All right, I'm gonna go to the next one by doing this. 
And again, we're going to, I'm just jumping around here because I don't know how else to do this. It's just an effort, uh, thanks to uh, Mary giving us, letting us mess with her stuff. And again, um, you can see that all this stuff is out of value right here, right? Just a little too, just a little too contrasty. And again, blur your eyes so you won't, you won't agree with me, right? But this is a little too contrasty. And you're saying, if you say what are the values of the, of the, of the uh, curtain, that's when you get into trouble. We don't care what the values of the curtain are. We care what the values are uh, of the mass, right? So what's happening is this dark comes trucking across here. And again, go ahead and let this go all the way, right? Let this, let this have a movement to it. It's going to be lighter over here. You're not wrong. But I don't want to see where it stops. I don't think you have to own that any more than you have. Because we, we don't even have to understand cast shadows in this way of working. We just have to understand where the effects end and where they and where they pick up. So what's happening is this thing goes over here and gets lighter and lighter. And you're not wrong in your location here. That's an important place. None of the stuff inside it is important. But what's happening here is this truck's over and somewhere, for some reason this paper is working less well, right there, you're gonna see the big transition. That's a major transition and easy place to measure. So you can move that, you can see where that lands. It's further over, further over, and it's, and it's ending with a form idea, right? So right here, this thing softly turns into that with a form idea. That's a soft turn, right? And you can, go, you can push it too far. You can go back and forth with it. But you want to wind up with this as a form idea and everything else as a unity because I don't want to be into the secondary stuff yet. So all this stuff just hangs together. Now, in general, this spot here should look about right, right? The spot here, value. But it shouldn't differentiate itself except in gradation, right? So what happens is this gets darker and darker and darker and then disappears and we're, we're quietly happy. Now, if this still looks too inky, you do want to do something about it, but you don't really need to get into it. You just need to do that to it. Stay that kind of simple, okay? Maintain these unities. You can see again where I was in the last one. Now, in this case here, this would be a perfectly good time to just use up some of that gray, that dead gray, and lighten up our darks. This, this is clearly too, too, this dark dark here is clearly, it should be more in this category, right? And that's one of those things you want to do. You want to jump your eyes over and if you see a value here, look else, look, see if you can see them in a plane without knowing what they are. Well, knowing what they are is just confusion. It does nothing to help you. But this here wants to maintain a certain disappearing, right? It's not that present as you've made it. So, and again, you've done the right thing by not drawing in here much, right? None of this stuff matters. You think it, you, you're worried about it, but don't worry about it. Uh, but again, blur your eye and see what the next biggest effect you can work with is, right? Anyway, you can see there's more unity between, between um, the, this here, the bookcase. I mean, the windowsill. <laughs> bookcase. All right. Between, there's more unity between the windowsill here and the darks than you've said. Now, I've overdone it, but, I, but you see what I'm doing. So what I'm, what the big thing you should take away from this is you don't get to walk away and do lots more stuff. You have to make the stuff you have totally articulate. You have to make it really good, okay? Otherwise, and you should only do it in its time, right? That's probably the great lesson of this way of working is, is how to do a thing in its time. So there's one of those exits we talked about last time. Do you see that one? That one really wants to be brilliantly placed. Don't be messing around with not having that in the right place, okay? That's a classic, easy to get proportion location. This one here, as you see, is miles too high, right? All that stuff is going to be adjusted and affected by this. Um, so, but that's just information you're going to, you know, there are two kinds of information that a person like me teaching gives. One, one is simply this method, this way of working in the visual order. And the second one is actually just noticing that you have proportions wrong and those sorts of things. So, but you can see this yourself, that this isn't landing in the right place. It's also not at the right angle when it exits. Let's just move it down somewhere and you can get an idea of what I'm talking about without me putting two hours into it, okay? So, and again, this one here is way out of order, right? It's visually way too strong. And you're much better off losing it completely and then coming back and finding it to the right degree of strength than you are um, saying, oh, I gotta draw the right side of the object. It's the visual order of this edge right here, which is also, by the way, again, in the wrong place. So you can see that that's going to have to move nicely down. Uh, and again, that's, is that exactly half there or something, right? Anyway, it's going to come over quite a bit. And then you want to really nail that location there. Really do get some good work one more time of getting this whole sweeping thing to come in there and do its job, okay? But it's the upper part here that is the job, is the, is the drawing guy. So even across through here, you'll get to find much more unity 
you're going to find much more unity of this thick stuff. It's going to hang together much better, so it gives you a strong edge there. Until you get right here, where you have a beginning of lostness. That's right there. You have the beginning of lostness. And uh, uh, so I'm hoping that comes across to you a little bit. Again, you're not into the drawing inside here. I'm going to have to use black for that. So the inside here, you're not into the drawing inside there at all. Stay away from that. Uh, again, you have to do it with the right, the right kind of lostness, right? And that's a hard one to see. It's hard to understand, or rather, and it's hard to make yourself do it. But that, but the, but this thing here, by the way, the upper part of this disappears too. Don't imagine that that really shows. The upper part of that loop disappears. Blurs, blur your eye, it disappears, right? Uh, believe me, okay, for now. Uh, but it actually does it at a, at a slightly different value than what you have. But, but somewhere in there, something does read, right? But where? Well, somewhere. But I'm not interested in it, actually, right now. I would be far more interested in, if I needed it, something in that area, possibly, the, at this point, the edge of the window or something like that. Or this thing we talked about before. Now, again, this starts disappearing again, right? This thing here, right? It starts wobbling up into there and it start be starts becoming lost. Now, we do work from what we call lost and found, but it's not a cute look. It's actually a process. It's a way of processing information, right? It's kind of a funny thing, but I don't want to have that conversation about, about the cuteness of lostness. Oh, I love being a lost and found painter. It's just not, not even relevant. It's a method. It's part of the method, the overall methodology of this thing. So, yeah, so if you can stay away from any drawing that's, whose time hasn't come yet. And how well have you done with the rest? And again, you can see where I'm going to take you over here. All this stuff is going to go way down, right? Now, these effects here eventually will come in, but now, right? No, not now. The, again, the unity of this matters, the darkest dark being here, and then the sweeping thing of getting slowly less dark over through here. All this unity always matters. I'm back to that again, right? So you're always pulling unities while you're finding, while you're isolating things that you must draw. It's always those two things in combination, right? You figure out what not to draw, which is another way of saying you figure out what to draw, and, and that's by blurring your eyes. And everything else is about stating light effects and unities, right? What to draw has to be drawn with its light effects. All right. I don't know if I'm going to get away with doing this in a, such a short order. I'm trying to do this fast, and it may not be adequate for, our, for your purposes. Uh, Mary, it's in some ways adequate for mine, but you can see again how important it is to establish this, this spot right there. And again, it's a blob. It's a blob. It's a point right there. It's a spot, right? And it's key that you get that in the right place, right? And I made it just a tiny bit, I think, too high. But it's, the, it's, a, little, it's a little chunk like that. And this has got to be a solid, I think Benson said that, a solid mass of value, meeting a solid mass of value. And it's got to project its light. Right, so we're gonna to have to do something here, get right in there and see if we can get that edge to be sharp enough, the dark dark enough, the light light enough, until it actually produces the glow, the sensation of, of a glowing light, right? And by the way, you're always trying to balance the general impression of the value, the general tonality of a picture. That's the overall value of the picture. You don't wanna get inky anywhere. So that's, this makes this a much more interesting problem, doesn't it? <laughs> so, um, but you can see that I'm beginning right at this point to get something that begins to suggest something that'll work, right? And so it's this little point I'm trying to get. The rest of the stuff will come around later. I mean, m meaning this is actually data. Now, before the start is done, this will be a busy area. Some, there'll be more busyness in certain places like this. You can plainly see that. And there'll be more busyness right in that spot there. Um, so... Yeah, but you can see all the same problems. Some of these things need to, they, they really need to be there. If you're doing a top, it has to be in the right place. So don't just let it be in the wrong place just to say, oh, I did something, you know, but really do good work getting that in the right place, getting these angles right. Do, make it, um, make it work for you. Make it, if it doesn't work for you, it's working against you. Do you see what I'm saying when I say that? If you're putting stuff in there and it's in the wrong place or it has the wrong visual effect, then it's going to be hurting. It's going to be damaging the cause, okay? By the way, that's a nice point, a very nice point. The height of it to here, that's a point angle moment, right? So really be good at that. Really get the angle as, as well as you can, right? And uh, I'm just going to try to do this with my finger. But get that, do a good job getting an angle. Your finger will give you a softer read on it. Once you find that in the right place, just go ahead and blow it over with a softer edge. But that's that description there. You're trying to get that. Now, don't be ambitious to get eight things and to draw, and don't do the drawing of the object at the top of the, of the, top of the chair, uh, the bed, or whatever that is. Don't do that, okay? 
It's not your job. Um, but your job is going to be to get busyness, but you're doing it by effects that are needed, right? It still is probably too, the angle is still off, but I think the pillow goes down. But that's, but you can see what I would uh, go after next and next and next. Uh, but there's so many, there are plenty of other points that we can work on or could work on. Um, like that location there, you know, we talked about in the other one. This winds up being pretty important um, uh, for a couple of reasons. I want to talk about lostness, by the way. Whenever you have something that appears to be lost, losing it actually is very helpful. Make it lost as you possibly can. I'm talking, say, about these things right here. Don't see differences there because then you won't be able to express um, the differences of great things will be affected by... Your ability to express the great differences will be affected by too many expressions of little differences, right? I had a student once who uh, I asked why they were uh, overstating uh, uh, some values and making the contrast too great, like right here. And that person said, well, I wanted to show the nuances. And, uh, you know, it occurred to me uh, probably after I left her that just the very point of nuances is they don't show, right? <laughs> it's nuanced, right? So the more you can pull off big unities, right? By the way, this, this part here, we don't have to draw these little things here. You could put that down as a busyness if you wanted to. But you're really, that's really not your primary goal. Your primary goal is to figure out this value. And the relative lostness of this spot down here is very important to establishing the values, just like the light effect is important to establishing values at the other end of the game up there, okay? So, uh, yeah, so we still haven't come to doing any of this stuff. I, I'm, again, going to put you in that category. How good are the things you've already said before we start adding all the other little things we might put into this picture? Uh, all right. So at, at the next level, though, it'll, there'll definitely be uh, an ambition, for example, to get this thing here, uh, this, this bottom edge, that light effect right there, right up into this, say. Just right up into there, turn the corner, whatever it takes. That's going to be important. It's also going to be important that it disappears, right? That we don't get into drawing the, this. We don't need to draw that. We just need this point here. If you can see how I'm saying that and why I would say that. And again, this one over here, the right edge of it put that in exactly the right place by angle, by distance this way, by distance this way. That's what points do for you. Okay, so really, really use these up. Okay, really do good work with them. Um, so I'm not getting all your drawing in the great place because I'm not in a good position to even see what this is doing, uh, sitting in this chair like this. But um, you can see where I'm headed, though. It's going to be about the leading effect. That's the leading effect of this thing right here. Well, that's a good locator because it's such a big distance, right? This is a more minor one. It's got stuff all around it. But this is still probably the strongest one right there. So as you're working along here, you're going to have the two things I said, the pragmatic, where is it, and the, and the, uh, and the visual order thing, uh, what's it doing, okay? And in terms of the like, light is light and dark is dark, leading effect to lesser effects, okay? All right. So I think you can follow that. Let me just jump to the other one and see if there's anything useful for me to do there. The busier these get, the less, the less I can do with them. But... Uh, all right, let's see how much time we've wasted on this. I should say, this is not a waste, so don't let me say that to you. Uh, but since I, I'm doing this, it's probably going to take another five minutes. So, But again, you can see the same thing keeps happening, right? This is the failure of unity. So talk about easy ones. This is always an easy one to do, right? It's easy to get this thing here. Um, with the charcoals I have in my hand, it may make more sense to do this with both lighter and darker. Now, if you find a spot, people talk to me about wet into wet. If you find a spot where you think the value is right, you just get in there with your charcoal and match that value. And then you see that it should be darker over here. Go over and match that value. And then you know where you're starting, where you're going to end, right? If that's your darkest dark, you know you're starting here with this value X, which is not as dark as this, and then make a beautiful transition. But you can do the same thing if you start with this one. And just you see this is slightly darker from here. You can see this one's almost the same, but slightly lighter. Just go for those. Again, but you can see this, every time you get a chance, you've made your points, but you haven't made your unities, okay? And at this stage, those things still matter. <laughs> if these unities, if this whole picture isn't hanging together as a whole, which is a point you made very well and you you took very well in your uh, listening to my videos. Um, so you're gonna see all this stuff with far greater unity. The simplicity of it is atmosphere, it's pure atmosphere. The more crap you put inside these darks, the more you're wrecking your atmosphere, your qualities of atmosphere, especially hard edges like that one. Oh my God, I don't do that. Just anything. Of course, marks of any kind, the busy strokes I'm making now are not friends, right? So you want to get this to a, to a simplicity, to a softness, to a, um, to a sweeping unity and a value. Um, it's just hard to do on this paper. And a value, um, sorry, say a broken value 
uh, it's not the it's not your friend. You want it to be you want it to be pulled into a, a soft wet into wet look. Okay. All right. But anyway, pull all that stuff together. Blow it all the way across there, and you're going to see what my, my, how much more magic there's going to be here. And the way, remember, you can just this thing. Just ignore this. Just see the big sweeping movement. It's this whole value over here is less dark than the whole value here. So see these big sweeping movements. This this one here will be based on that light effect there, and this one will be based on this light effect here. Well, I mean everything is based initially on this one, right? Which again isn't there yet. So um, and again, when you get to this point where you've actually expressed this great movement through here and have the values right right across, this one here will make more sense. You'll know where you have to live with this one, right? So, um, but that one has to be dark enough to pop me a light here, right? To actually feel like it's glowing a bit with sunshine, all right? And it will. It'll look like it is. If you get the edge and you get the contrast in a reasonable place, all right? Um, and again, you can see what you're doing here. You're drawing, but you're not producing effects, okay? So that's one of the things you can't do. What this, what's happening is back to that V again. Make sure you do a good job of actually isolating the light in that V. You see, when you get to this thing here, that dark has got to, the lights around it have to pop. So make, and you're getting close to that, but this doesn't quite do it, okay? So just stay on it. Um, but yeah, otherwise you're doing just fine. Every place you look, though, that if you're making a shape, you're making a light effect. Remember, the method is light. <laughs> Uh, so it matters that you don't just draw a shape right. It matters that you get the contrast right to produce the light effect and then compare your light effects to all the other light effects in the entire picture. You can see how you never recovered from this, did you? That larger unity of this thing here. I'll just probably have the dirt in my finger to do this with. But this piece of paper feels extremely slicker than the other one did. But do you see how this stuff wants to hang together considerably more? The pillow does not come out, does it? So not only in the direction of... Um, well, let me just say the whole thing has got to get, as it were, darker. Now, this whole thing, if you blur your eyes, you can see this whole area is darker, right? Blur your eyes more, more frequently, to see how things hang together. If you blur enough, you'll be able to see it. This, this one is disappearing at the right speed. You know, how am I saying that? As you open your eyes, you can see gradually more and more. <laughs> Let's hope I didn't lose an important one. Um, so again, it's back to that same old thing. If you blur your eyes at this thing, you're going to see more unity. That's all I'm really saying. So all this stuff is going to continue to pull together again, just as I showed you before. This is all going to stay together. Now, oh, I was going to say, as your eyes are blurred, as your eyes blur, if you're blurred a lot, you won't be able to see this edge. But you will be able to see this transition way over here. You'll be able to see that, oddly enough, because these are major shifts. This is a major plane, as it were, right? This one right here. That's a major shift right there. You may think this is major because it's an object or because there's a sharp edge or things like that. But if you blur your eyes, you can see this flowing right over to that, but you can't make this flow all the way into that. It's going to stop somewhere up in here. Um, yeah. So again, you're back, you're off again still with your values here, just too, too dark. So you made that. There's a little piece of dark right there at the edge of the, um, right in there, that looks like it might be the same as this. But there's no other dark in this area that's in anywhere near that value, okay? So it matters that you have the general impression of this side doing the right thing, right? If I get this thing, this dark here, to be a little bit lighter, you can see that then I could actually get away with making the, um, these pieces, which you've made better in this one, by the way. But making those lighter, it'll, all the, the whole thing will hang together better. So, yeah, just keep blurring your eyes a ton, okay? Just keep blurring your eyes a ton and just draw... Limit your drawing to the parts that you can still see. I still can't see this, right? This part still doesn't show. But you won't be, won't be particularly long before you can actually have permission to draw the right side of that, of that, um, of that frame, whatever that is, right? Where the, I'm talking about where the shadow, um, where the shadow hits the curtain or where the, and that's the wrong value, but where the, uh, or where the, but, but it begins to be this line right here, the shadow of the object silhouetting against that, it begins to be one of your first readers in that area. I'm just going to knock it lighter, make the contrast less great. It matters in each place, as I say, that these values be doing the right thing. Uh, you can't have sudden and arbitrary uh, darks. So I hope you're with me on this. That's, that's probably the best I can do with this just to get the ideas across to you. Um, hope it does. Hope it does. 
Yeah, I'm gonna stop at that, okay? And let's just see, get your response back and let's see how you're feeling about what that would then mean, right? Do I have a middle tone? You see what I'm doing here? I'm just going right back to that whole thing about trying to get you to tell me about the, uh, the roundness of the pillow and the relative lostness of the underplane of the pillow, right? So you can see what's happening there, right? And so this whole right end here starts getting more dark. The light effect, you know, begins to be more obvious here, right? This is broken stuff. Okay, that's the best I can do. What you don't want to do is add more stuff here until these things are really good, though, and that's where I should leave it for you. Every contrast here has a relative place in space, and if they, if they jump, if they pop off the page, you should be able to feel it. You should be able to feel it quite easily. This one doesn't jump off the page anywhere near as much as you seem to be want to intimidate. In, intimate. <laughs> okay, you can see what I mean by watching the visual order? Um, this one doesn't jump off the page even this much, by the way, which I just did to it. It's, it's, that's why you're watching. When you start making an effect, you know, how a dark feels against the light, notice this dark and then notice one like it and get them to play right to each other. This one still feels like it should be lighter to, the, to this one, but that one's still not going to be inky. So what does that mean? Well, it could very well mean that the overall darkness of this area here should be greater, right? So that, that one, so this one will appear to be, so this one will appear to be lighter. That's the sort of thing that tends to happen to you. Anyway, all right, thank you very much, uh, Mary, for your, for your query, and uh, I hope that brings some of this across. This was, not, it was one of the awkward things I've done. I really am no friend to photographs, I want to say. Um, uh, but, um, so if you do this, if you want to send me something, go ahead, but send me a shot. Uh, um, well, I'm going to have to do it for photographs no matter what you send me. But if you could send me a shot that shows you both you and the situation, you know, the painting and the, uh, and the uh, thing you're, you're working with. So if your painting were sitting right here, it would be more helpful to me to see it. If they're both in reasonable light, it would be more helpful for me to see to make a critique. All right. Well, there it is. Thank you very much, guys. And i got to get out of here. It's been a very long time.